In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Friday, the 4th of October, 2024. It is Friday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time, Church Yebi. Today is the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis's footsteps, we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1, 12 to 21, and chapter 40, verses 3 to 5. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 139. The response to the psalm is, Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. Our meditation is drawn from the gospel text. At that time, Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. He who yes you yes me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Rebuke evil and wrong when you see it. Don't let it pass by. Rebuke evil and wrong when you see it. Don't let it pass by. Dear good people of God, One good quality Jesus had was that of a balanced judgment. He gave praise where and when praise was due. Similarly, he rebuked where and when rebuke was needed. It did not matter who. He knew it was his duty to appreciate any good that was done and he appreciated, and to point out any wrong and rebuke it, and he did so. For example, he praised the rich young man in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 21, after saying that he had kept all the commandments from when he was a child, Jesus looked at him and loved him, because indeed he spoke the truth, and Jesus said to him, You have done well. 
That was praise. Jesus praised the faith of the centurion in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 10. Nowhere in Israel have I found faith such as this. Jesus praised the lone Samaritan leper of 10 who came back to thank him. Confer Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. He also rebuked the Pharisees for their hypocrisy. Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. He rebuked those who were selling in the temple, making his father's house into a den of thieves. He whipped them all out of the temple. John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. He rebuked lawyers. Luke chapter 11, verse 46. He rebuked even his own apostles. For example, Peter, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 23, when Peter tried to dissuade him from the cross. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus told him. He equally rebuked James and John in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 54 and 55, when they asked for fire to devour the Samaritan town that did not make him welcome. In today's gospel text, he rebuked some cities, Matthew chapter 11, verse 21, for their failure to heed God's word. Jesus will not see evil and let it pass by. In many instances, his rebuking evil led to conversion and to good. But imagine that he had let it pass. He rebuked out of love. He rebuked out of concern. He rebuked because of his desire to see good and for the good of the people. We are told only a good parent who wants the best for their child will discipline them. It is discipline out of love, not out of hatred. And that is why Jesus rebuked evil when he saw it. The problem with us is we are never balanced in judgment like Jesus. First, some people will never give praise when and where it is due. But they will focus on the evil. They wait only for the evil to rebuke. Fair enough, evil should be rebuked. But remember that praise should also be given when it is seen. Don't take it for granted. Let us not be too negative. Some people will never praise you for all the good you do. But make a mistake. Oh, that was what they were waiting for. We should be balanced in judgment. Jesus praised when he saw praise. And he rebuked when he saw error. Second, some people will end at praises and say nothing of your wrongs. They fear to hurt the feelings of those who have done wrong to them or those who do wrong. So they see the wrong you do, but they fear to hurt your feelings and they just let you go. Jesus did not care how people felt. Evil was evil and had to be rebuked. A good wife, for example, who loves her husband should correct him when he does wrong. And a good husband, out of love for his wife, will rebuke her wrongs and we too should rebuke our friends likewise. Only one who loves you will tell you your mistakes. But those who hate you will not tell you, but they'll laugh at you behind you. But many times when our wrongs are told to us, we defend. Or we see those who tell us our wrongs as our enemies. Third, we hide or we become blind to the evils of those whom we call our friends. We see nothing wrong in what they do or with what they say. We let it slide. You become a partner in crime. So there are many who see evil, but who stay quiet because it was done by their friend. No. Jesus will give praise when he sees good, and he will rebuke when he sees evil. Even with his very close friends. Remember, he went to the home of Martha, Mary and Lazarus, and he told Martha to her face, you worry and fret about many things. Mary has chosen the better part. Jesus did not mean words. He said it as it was. 
dear good people of God, it is our duty to admonish sinners. It is a spiritual work of mercy. The letter of St. James, chapter 5, verse 20 says, Whoever succeeds to bring a sinner back from their evil ways will save them from death, and for themselves they will cancel many of their sins. Do not be indifferent when you see evil and wrong. Rebuke it. Do not be quiet when you see evil and wrong and say it is not your business. After all, those doing it are not your friends. Rebuke it. Do not try to cover wrong and evil because it is done by your friend. Rebuke it. The wrong they do will lead to their damnation, but you will share in their guilt because you saw and stayed quiet. Confer Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18. Let us learn from Jesus. Give praise when you see good that is done and rebuke evil and wrong. Call sinners and we want people to caution. Do you know the warning Jesus gave to those cities was enough to convert at least one or two people? Jesus scolded and rebuked them. Alas for you, Chorazin. Alas for you, Bethsaida. Alas for you, Capernaum. He rebuked them and indeed the rebuke led to at least one or two people being converted. So too, your words of admonition can save a soul from damnation. When someone admonishes you, it is out of love. One who does not love you will not care. They may even want that the evil you do leads to your destruction. Don't ask them that they are admonishing you as who. We all have the duty. So beloved, don't let it pass. When you see evil and wrong, rebuke it just like Jesus rebuked the cities for their failure to heed God's word. Francis was born at Assisi in the year 1182. As a young man, he renounced his father's wealth and pursued a life of voluntary poverty while remaining a lay person. Gifted with a joyful spirit, he lived the gospel to the full and attracted many followers. He preached through the example of his life, and his message brought about a renewal in the church. Towards the end of his life, he received the stigmata and died on the 3rd of October, the year 1226. Many religious institutes find in St. Francis their founder and inspiration. We think in a very special way of the tertiary sisters of St. Francis and the Capuchin friars. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Francis, especially Pope Francis, and to institutions named after him. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.